We are about to see BPDU Guard in action on the same topology that we used for our previous lab for root guard. The two major differences here I want to point out because this is the kind of thing we got to be aware of, of course, in the real world, but also on our exam. And that's with BPDU Guard. Notice that this is being triggered by any BPDU coming in on a BPDU Guard enabled port. Also, that particular port is going to go into error disabled state. And we saw that earlier with port security, remember in shutdown mode. Well, BPDU Guard doesn't offer any modes. The only action it can take is to put a port that sees a BPDU into error disabled state. And we know the deal with error disabled state. By default, the port is not coming out of that by itself. We have to reset it. And we have to do a little something else in there too. But we'll see that here in just a moment. And what I wanted to share with you, we have that information there on the board. And I'm going to share a real world usage for BPDU Guard that's really come in handy for me over the years. But right now, let's go ahead and just see it in action first. And we'll revisit that other scenario in just a moment. Now we'll switch three. Let's make sure first off that I know how to spell the word show. And then we'll check port four. So everything is fine. That's the port connected to uh, route, excuse me, switch four and it's up and up and we're good to go there. So what we'll do now is go ahead and enable BPDU guard on that port while the port is open. So let's go ahead and hit for the interface. And another quick word of warning here, watch BPDU filter versus guard. Now BPDU filter is not part of your NA studies and we got to stop somewhere, but I just want to point that out to you that with the filter, we're not sending or receiving BPDUs on an interface. With BPDU guard, and that's the one we're concentrating on in your NA studies, you're not accepting BPDUs on that interface. And we're about to see what happens when you do, because we're about to enable it. And it is disabled by default. These are our options at this point, obviously, and there are none after that. So spanning BPDU guard enable is the command we're looking for. So I'll go ahead and put that into action. I did turn off the timestamps here to make it a little easier to read. And you'll notice that it did not take very long at all because we know those BPDUs are getting originated. Four would have been the root at that point. So it's originating every two seconds. So uh, it didn't take long at all. And you can see it's really crystal clear what happened. We've got span tree block BPDU guard here. Tells you exactly what happened. We're just missing a few letters there because I like to make the font as big as I can. Receive BPDU on, the, on this port with BPDU guard enabled. And by golly, what happens then? The port has been disabled. It even tells you right here, error disable mode. And naturally, if the port is in error disable mode, it's going to be physically down. And that means our line protocol is gone as well, the logical state of the interface. So let's have a look at interface four here. And you can see physically down, logically down, error disabled. Bad combination for a port that we might just want to be up. So what we need to do then, since we're in error disabled mode, is to reset the port. But what do we need to do first? I know it's obvious, but I'm asking anyway. What do we have to do first? We have to resolve the issue. And this is not the only feature we know. It's not the only feature that will put a port into error disabled mode, and you will run into others in future studies. So we got to know that we've got to resolve the issue. Well, in this case, the issue is that we're getting BPDUs from switch four. So we would want, of course, to keep this port shut until we find out, first off, who the heck is switch for? You know, is this a device under our control? Is it under someone else's? And let's see what's going on. Because what happens if we just reset the port at this point? And by manual reset, I mean a shut and then a no shut. And we see that it's administratively down. That would be the only difference. Well, as soon as I do a no shut, it's going to start to come back well. And there's state to up and line protocol goes up. But immediately, you know, we got a BPDU guard coming in. So it's going to go right back to being error disabled. So we would have to find out what's going on on that switch four before we would do a reset. Now, as far as switch three goes, you know, let me, let's actually minimize this a bit because I want to talk to you about a really great real world use for this. And that is with our old friend port fast. And we know the warning we get with that. You know, we enable port fast on a port. It should only be enabled on ports connected to a single host. And connecting just about anything else will, can cause temporary bridging loops used with caution in uppercase. So that means we should really pay attention. 
Well, the thing is, if you have BPDUs coming in, and the port that's receiving those BPDUs is port fast enabled, you can end up with a switching loop. And we would rather prevent that. And Cisco knows that, and they have a great way in one fell swoop. And we got to find out what a fell swoop is. I've been saying that for a long time. All at one time, we can enable BPDU guard on any port on that switch that is port fast disabled, excuse me, enabled. So that's a pretty good deal. And let's see that in action. Let's go ahead and bring everything up. And I'm just going to leave that port shut down. We know the deal there. Let me show you actually one other command while we're at it. Port fast. And here are your options for port fast BPDU filter. That's not what we're working with. We're working with guard. But notice here there's also a command for enabling port fast by default on all of your access ports. So let's actually take a look at that. And we get another warning, which shouldn't surprise us at this point. Notice it mentions this command enables port fast by default on all interfaces. You should now disable port fast explicitly on switch ports, leading to hubs, switches, and bridges, etc. And that's definitely something that you want to do. Now, what we can also do here, and since we're talking about BPDU guard, I definitely want to show you this, that you can enable BPDU guard on all of, yep, there we go, on all of your port fast enabled ports. And this is really important because the command is not spanning BPDU guard default. It's spanning port fast BPDU guard default. And what we're doing is enabling this feature on all port fast enabled ports. So let's say you do that, which we just did. Let's say now you have a particular interface. Hey, I want it to run, except I don't want BPDU guard running on interface three for some reason. All you would need to do is go in and disable it. Just like that. We would just use spanning BPDU guard disable for that. So again, showed you an extra command in there, nothing wrong with that, but what I really want to emphasize here is that you can enable BPDU guard on all port fast enabled ports with spanning port fast BPDU guard default. And then if you want to go in and disable BPDU guard on a particular interface or interfaces while leaving it enabled on all your other port fast enabled ports, whew, that's a mouthful, then you can just go in with spanning BPDU guard disable. So not a complicated command at all. Just be very clear on exactly what it does when it operates. And then of course, it's going to put a port into error disabled mode whether a superior or inferior BPDU is received. We are going to take a break here, and when we come back with the next section, we're going to start working with ether channels. I've mentioned a couple of times, you know, when we've, when we've had, you know, a backup link or a redundant link between switches, we've got two or three different trunks running, that by default, we're only working with one of the trunks. And we took a look at per VLAN load balancing to start bringing some of those other links into play. But wouldn't it be great if we could just logically bundle all of those trunks and just have SDPC it as one link? That would be great, and it is great. And we're going to see the ins and outs of that and see it in action in the Ether Channel section, and that's coming up next.